Dr. Derek Marnie is an orthodontist and he used to feel really tired, not just at night time like most of us do when it's time to sleep, but by lunchtime. He couldn't work out what was going on until he took a sleep test. That's when he discovered what was wrong and yep, you guessed it, sleep apnea. But what is sleep apnea and what can be done about it? Let's find out. Dr. Marnie, hello. Hi, how are you? How tired were you? Normally, by uh, lunchtime, I'd find that I'd have to take uh, maybe a half hour uh, uh, nap. Um, if not, I found it uh, quite irritable to uh, work in the afternoon. And uh, as a result, you can imagine with a large patient flow, that became quite an issue. Whereas nowadays, after um, wearing a snoring appliance, I actually feel quite fine till the end of the day. So you've mentioned snoring, and I think most people do just think snoring when it comes to sleep apnea, but we'll talk more about that. Just thinking about you, did you have any other symptoms? Um, other than the fact that my wife complained about the uh, uh, the noise at night time, not, not really. <laughs> I've actually heard on our Facebook site that some people do sleep in separate rooms because Absolutely. of this kind of thing. Did you try any other kinds of um, treatments or any anything else before you went to the sleep clinic? Well, of course, my medical GP uh, suggested uh, weight loss, but that's probably easier sort of said than done. The only other option that was given to me was having some... Um, surgery on my uh, soft palate which I didn't really I, I thought I'd try this and I was told after the sleep study if this wasn't successful my only other option was to use a, um, a what's called a CPAP machine which is like a positive pressure machine you wear at night. Well lots of people do use those did you try one of them? I, fortunately I didn't need to because after using the uh, appliance I had a follow-up sleep study and it showed that my uh, apnea had dropped uh, to normal levels but there's, there's you know, despite that, I felt uh, a lot more energy during the day. So let's talk about sleep apnea. What exactly is it? What sleep apnea is, uh, when your muscles relax um, uh, at night, uh, particularly the uh, muscles around the base of the tongue and the, uh, the neck, your, your airway can collapse and uh, it can form a blockage, which is like a total obstruction of breathing. So without you realising, you're effectively uh, waking up during the night and not getting uh, the deep sleep that gives you the rest. You mentioned uh, your doctor, your GP, suggested that you'd lose weight. Is there a certain type of person who suffers from this condition more than others? I see in clinical practice patients, um, particularly men post 40, that have very large necks. I think pretty much uh, uh, every front row uh, forward you see on TV <laughs> would, uh, would, would definitely have some form of sleep, uh, uh, sleep apnea. But having said that, uh, other than the weight issue, there are people who have a very recessive lower jaw, which is what we call class 2 jaw, and they could be uh, you know, thin uh, or overweight. So I think it's a combination certainly of, um, I mean, the worst case scenario would be a male over 40 who uh, has a large neck size and has a class 2 jaw and possibly has a few more drinks of red wine before he goes to bed. You know? <laughs> when I was a lot younger, I had a boyfriend and I used, to, when he was asleep, I used to, to wait to listen for him to start breathing and he would just literally stop breathing. He was thin, uh -huh. he didn't have a thick neck, he didn't drink red wine. Dreadful sinus problems, though. Can that be something? Because it was it was terrifying. I thought he's just not going to start breathing again. Yeah, well, and, and this is the thing. Although the majority of people have the obstruction at the base of their tongue, uh, obstruction of the airway can also occur nasally. It can also occur further uh, down the back of the throat in what we call the uh, epiglottis. And, and this is why I think if you really want to um, get the problem sorted out, one of the methods other than the sleep study, which only tells you that you have the apnea, is to find out where the site of obstruction is. And, and I find um, working with an e-nose and throat doctor is invaluable for that because they put a little camera through your nose that allows them to see uh, the nasal area, the, the base of the tongue, and also right down uh, uh, into the trachea. Uh, and they will be able to tell you exactly where this obstruction is. And so for in my situation, the obstruction was at the base of the tongue, and therefore it was easy for me to hold my jaw forward at night with an appliance. Other people, such as your boyfriend who had the, um, the nasal obstruction, uh, he would really need to get some nose and throat to one done to, to get an effective outcome. Now, apart from being tired all the time and your spouse humphing off to sleep in another room, uh -huh. 
what kinds of prob- other kinds of problems can result from sleep apnea? The, the classic is being tired on waking, people having morning headaches. Uh, the common one we've discussed, which is the sort of excessive uh, daytime sleepiness, but you can add to that probably um, poor concentration. Uh, I know in the literature they've linked decreased sex drive, impotence, personality changes, anxiety. So there's a whole list of things. Um, I think, I think the, the commoner ones, though, certainly are uh, an elevation in your blood pressure related to the fact that rather than your heart rest at night, it has to overwork mm. uh, to, uh, to keep the airway open. Do most people with sleep apnea go undiagnosed? The, the latest research uh, seems to indicate um, of every 10 Australian adults, uh, two will experience uh, snoring uh, during their, their lifetime. And, and that snoring usually doesn't cause a significant uh, medical problem. But for some people, uh, I think that snoring is, uh, is indicative of the more serious condition, which is the, uh, the sleep apnea. And again, that research would indicate that probably um, of the sort of 4.2 million people in Australia that snore, maybe 80% of those um, go undiagnosed and untreated for the apnea. Mm, which would uh, lead to complications down the track, one Absolutely. could imagine. Absolutely. In all kinds of different areas. So you've mentioned the CPAC machines that a lot of people use. Now, the surgery, that was also an option. What does that involve? The, the term surgery can relate to um, uh, where the obstruction uh, in, in the body is. For instance, if it's um, uh, uh, related to the uh, tonsils or the adenoids, uh, which it is sometimes for younger children, then that involves uh, that type of surgery. But the other type of surgery that's more common is to remove some of the excess tissue at the back of the throat, which um, they call a U-triple-P. Some surgeons uh, also look at reducing the size of the tongue, if that's the, uh, the cause of the obstruction. And, and, and the last surgery, which is a fairly major surgery, is to bring the upper and lower jaw forward, which is uh, done by an orthonasic um, uh, a surgeon. Apart from such drastic treatments, is there anything else people can do? I think, obviously, I agree with the loss of excess uh, body weight, you know, the regular exercise, all the things your GP will normally recommend. Uh, obviously, avoiding alcohol or any medications that increase uh, drowsiness. And, and lastly, I find sleeping on the side rather than on the back, uh, just from a gravity point of view, will reduce the, the, the problem. But I think that the take-home message is if you or your partner snore on a regular basis, you really should get a sleep study and or an enos and throat evaluation to rule out more serious problems. Dr Marnie, thank you so much for your time this afternoon. And do you still snore? Uh, not anymore. I'm, I'm using an appliance that's it's, uh, called a Somnomed, so it's like an upper and lower plate that I wear at night. It keeps my jaw forward and, and it stops the snoring, so everything's good in that regard. And yet another method to stop the wife going to the other room to sleep. Exactly. <laughs> Dr Derek Marnie, thank you once again. Thank you.